this video, we're going to do a demo of the implicit flow. I've got a website called Examples configured in IIS. This points to the physical path over here. That's this folder. I've currently got a jQuery file, which I'm going to use in this example to write my JavaScript code. Also, in this website, I've enabled HTTPS bindings as well because we're going to have all communication on HTTPS, as we discussed in the last video. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an HTML file that has the anchor tag that says login into Facebook. I'm going to put everything inside a container, and I'll name this login link with the ID login link. In addition to this, I'm going to have two more divs. One is a welcome message that greets the user after you successfully approved permissions on Facebook. And the third thing I'm going to have is a div for displaying errors if there are any. And I'll save this file in this folder with the name index.html. In addition, I'll include two script tags, one for the jQuery script and one for a custom script we're going to write that handles everything else that we discussed in the last video. That's pretty much it. Let's go and create the index.js file. I'm going to put all the data about the app in a separate object called app just to separate concerns and all the display concerns will be in a separate class called page. And the document.ready function is simply going to have to do this. So the page function, the page class would have a function called display, which would do, which would arrange the UI. And this display function would take an app object and so, and it would then display the UI. And the document.ready function would simply new up a page and call page.display with the global app object. That's basically the idea. And the display function would then display the login URL link. So I have another function for that called display login URL. And then I would have this guy because this guy is going to display the login link and the login link I would keep inside this app object. So let me go in first, put the login link over here. In fact, I'll call it provider. I'll have another object inside this called provider, which is going to have uh, the name of the provider. Sorry, my mouse is a bit unwieldy at the moment. I'll have the auth server URL, which is going to be in the case of Facebook, HTTPS, www.facebook.com slash, I think it was dialogue slash auth. That's it. And I'll put a question mark at the end. And I will have a resource server URL, which I don't remember, but for the moment, I'll leave it blank for now. That's the information <coughs> that the app object has. And, and then I'm also going to put all the query parameters that we need to send with an initial request in a params object over here. And this would have the client ID, which I'll copy and paste from my Facebook app in a while. It'll have the redirect URI, which will be the URI of the page and that would handle uh, the request, which would be this page. That's HTTPS, localhost. Um, I can I can do this, or I can omit the default SSL port, slash port to slash index.html. I can omit this guy as well, index.html, but I'll just keep it for the sake of completeness. I need a scope, which would be, let's say for now I need public profile and email. These are the two permissions of the user I need. 
these are not specific data items data items are fields so i'll have a fields thing I'll, and we'll just leave it as a string um, and the fields i need would be just the full name which is name uh, i need the first name specifically i need the last name and i need an email address for this user these are the things i need specifically and these are the permissions i need and then there's going to be a state there's going to be a response type which would be token and there going to, there's going to be a state that's optional I, i'd like to have a state so i just send some state say a b c d um, that's the app object that has everything that's data items uh, that we're going to use and so when I new up an object of the page class, I'm going to send it this app object, this global object. Although you don't need to pass this, I don't like having global state being accessed from different functions. So this guy's going to get this um, app object and he's going to cache a reference to this. So I will have another, um, in fact, I can do it here. I'm going to cache this app and I'm going to pass my app reference to every function. And this guy to display the login URL is going to need uh, the log. The login URL is over here. That's the login URL. So he's going to need a reference to the app object. So he's going to need an app object. And so when I call display this dot display login URL, I'm going to pass this app object to this guy. Next, to display the login URL, I need to first get the login URL from the app object and then attach or compose it with all its query string parameters. I can divide this again into further functions and then arrange the UI basically, um, UI thingy, do UI stuff, which is hide, hide the error object label and the welcome message label and just display the label that says login into the anchor tag. So uh, let's divide this into further functions. Let's call that. Let's have a function called get login URL, which again needs an app object to get the URL from, and then uh, it will also it'll do both of these things. It'll get a complete URL. So and this guy would just do the UI UI bit. So this guy would say get login URL, giving it the app object. And once it has the URL, it'll say the login link, set the href attribute of the login link equal to the login URL, and show it. So show this guy and hide the other two guys. That's it. To get the login URL, you say app dot provider dot auth server URL. That's the URL. And then I want each of the params over here to be attached to that URL. So I'll say object dot keys for app dot params. Uh, and for each key, please do. this and that's th that closes the for each and that's that um, and for each key what I want to do is I simply want to append to this URL something and that something would be the, the name of the key plus an equal to sign plus the value of the key which would be app dot params key and then I want to append an ampersand and that will leave a trailing ampersand at the end of the whole URL, which I don't really care about. And then I'll return the URL from this method. That gives this guy the URL and this guy displays it. And in the meanwhile, let's save this file for now as index.js. Now we have to do other things as well. But for now, let's just try and run this bit and see if it runs. 
and let's test it out. If I go, if I click this link, I should see an ID is required. Okay. It looks like I haven't given the client ID. Okay, yes, I haven't given the client ID. If you look at the status bar, I forgot to add the client ID. So let me go and do that. I've copied the URL from my Facebook dashboard and I put it over here. Let's go back and read on this code. And we see that the client ID now exists and the rest of the URL is also okay. So let me just go and go ahead and click this URL and I see that I, I'm asked, I'm being asked to log in into my Facebook. It says full bar will receive your public profile and email address. Those are the two scopes I added. I will if I say cancel or continue right now, we haven't written the code um, to handle that yet. Let's just say I say cancel. Uh, I haven't written any code, so nothing's going to happen. But I'm going to now have to write the code for handling redirect on the same URL. Uh, if that's if that's the um, if that's the query string. I need to handle this query string for an error case. Uh, so basically, I'm going to have to handle uh, a case where I get an error in the query string parameters on the same URL. And in case I had clicked continue, I would get back to the same URL in my application, which would be the same page that we are on. Uh, but I would get these things, which is I'd get an access token. I'd get the same state I sent back. I'd get an access token and I'd get an expiry in seconds for the access token. Let's go and write the code for the rest of it. I'll go back to my index.js and um, every time this page loads up, whether it comes with an error or it comes with an access token, it's going to execute this, this guy. It's going to new up a page object and call the display function. So in the display function, I need to not simply display the login URL blindly. I need to check if if the URL has an access token fragment, uh, then do something else. Otherwise, if the URL has an error query string parameter, then do whatever. Otherwise, display the login URL link. As in whether it has anything else in the query parameter or it doesn't have a query parameter, query string parameter, then display this link. So I need to first check the URL for the existence of an access token. Um, to do that, uh, the URL obviously can be obtained by window.location.href. Uh, why don't I make a property out of it like that? And then why don't I do all the examination on this property rather than typing this whole thing again and again? So let me. In fact, let me create, uh, I'm going to have to pass this URL and also retain the original URL. So let me create an object over here that has a property named URL, which has this. And then let me have another property called, say, params, which uh, is going to decipher or deconstruct the URL and then uh, just going to contain a dictionary or an object that has the key value pairs. Um, so let's have a function that basically does everything and then I'll execute that function right over here. It's an iffy uh, and that should give me the dictionary object. So I'll return some kind of a so I will take some kind of an object here and return that object. And that should be the dictionary. Uh, and over here, I'm simply going to say um, this dot URL. Of course, this changes now to something else, to this guy. So let me bind this guy to uh, this. In fact, or let me just bind it to the string uh, to this. Let me bind it to this guy so that this now refers to, to 
page.url.url which type string so um, when I say this it really means this guy which is a string what I need to do now is check for the presence of uh, a question mark if it doesn't have a question mark at all then return an empty object as the query string dictionary if it does have an if it does have a question mark um, then I want to check for so I'm going to get something like this this whole thing uh, let me first desanitize let me canonicalize or or HTML decode um, by removing these plus signs and that's the only thing I'm going to do I'm just going to replace um, I'm just going to replace equals I'll just say um, this dot split uh, first I'll split this and obviously it does have this so I'm only interested in the second element which is what follows the question mark and then I can say replace all occurrences of the plus sign in the string with say a space and that should take care of making this this uh, once I have a proper query string I need to split each part of the query string so I need to split uh, them on the basis of these ampersands so let's do that so I'll say query dot split on the basis of ampersand and that's going to be key value pairs that's going to give me a lot of pairs and then if there are no pairs I could simply have a URL with a trailing question mark so I have to check for the presence of any pair at all so sorry then I'm going to return P an empty object otherwise if there are pairs then otherwise if there are pairs then for each object for each pair Sorry about the mouse. My mouse is at the moment a little unwieldy. So for each pair, I want each pair in this variable called pair. And that's going to give me each one of these guys. Then I need to split it again on the basis of this. So I'll say, first of all, they may not be. They could simply be something like and foo so they may not be a equal to sign so I need to check if uh, bear dot index of the equal to sign is less than zero then I need to do something else otherwise if it's a proper pair I need to do something else so if there is no pair then still I need to add just the key without a value so I'll just say pair sorry sorry mouse pairs ith element please add that with nothing as the value otherwise if you do have something you know take a property and make that split the pair up using an equal to sign and p's key would be properties zeroth element and P's value would be properties first element and just in case there are these underscores in the value then I can I can replace those so I can just say this dot replace uh, any underscore please replace any underscore 
with this guy and that's about it I guess um, but then I might have uh, I might have a URL that starts with uh, that ends that starts with the trailing question mark but then has a URI fragment um, this bound sign in it so I need to strip that guy off so I'll say if any of the pairs have if pair dot index of this guy um, is zero that's going to be zero it's going to have to be zero because it's going to be the first position then the pair really is uh, substring of pair from the first element onwards and that should take care of um, that should take care of having this URL be constructed and once I have this URL deconstructed I can um, maybe I need to provide a method to even look up um, this URL so let me do that let me go to this URL object and add a function called uh, I don't know let's just say search so I'll just say search is a function that takes a pattern so I'll just delegate that to this dot URL dot search so I'm going to say if in fact, let me check for the presence of an error first. So if the query string has an error, I can do this in one of two ways. I can say if this dot URL dot params um, error is not equal to equal to undefined, or I can search, I can call the URL dot search with a pattern because the error um, could be anywhere. So I could say search for a question mark. Um, and then there has to be just one question mark followed by zero or more of any other character followed by the string error equal to uh, without any case sensitivity um, so please search for that and if that's the index of that is greater than zero then you've got an error situation um, so I'll say if sorry if this is greater than zero to do something Otherwise, I need to say if this guy has um, the same thing, a fragment, a URI fragment, followed by zero or more of any other characters, sorry, followed by zero or more of any other characters, followed by the string access token, equals and without case sensitivity then if this guy is greater than zero or equal to zero uh, then we've got an access token case otherwise we've got this case which is we just want to display the login URL now if we've got an error I need to decipher, I need to deconstruct the error. All I'm interested in displaying maybe is this guy and uh, this guy maybe and even this guy. So let me write a function called this dot. Let me just write a function in the URL object itself. This dot URL dot get error message, which is supposed to uh, give me the string error message string. Um, and then I just display, the, I do the UI thing. Uh, that's basically it. Now I need to write get error message in the URL object. So I'll just have another function called get error message, which should deconstruct the query string parameter, which should deconstruct the URL. In fact, we've already done the deconstruction, so I just need to check my params uh, array for the presence of an error. So what I can do here is uh, I can say uh, if this dot params error object doesn't exist or 
does exist then do this which is I'll just take so if it has an error reason please add an error reason and at the end please return this error message that should take care of getting us an error message so I'll say if you've got an error message get the error message and do the UI thing similarly if you've got an access token if you've got an access token I need the access token so I'll say this dot URL dot get access token and then do the UI thing which would be pretty similar to this guy oh before that I need to get the user so I'll say use that access token and I won't tell the URL to do it I'll tell this page class to get the user so I'll have a method over here called get user uh, I'll give the user I'll get that I'll give that function the access token and maybe I'll give that function that function needs to go to the resource server URL so I'll give it the app object as well <clears throat> and then once I have that bit I'll say if user is not undefined then display the stuff or if it is undefined then maybe I don't know throw a new error or or display an error message um, display something to the effect sorry I couldn't display the user I couldn't get the user and so on and so forth uh, but if you do have the user then please display um, user info so I, I or display that welcome message so I could say in fact let me put the whole of this in a try catch I could say try go getting the user try go and try getting the user token getting the access token and if you couldn't get the access token instead of doing this UI thing here let's separate concerns throw a new error saying uh, you know unable to fetch user details from provider dot this dot sorry yeah this dot app dot provider dot name and that otherwise if I can um, get the username and if I have an error again I'll, I'll display an error message um, so that helps us um, that method I think we've already written uh, that's going to help us display error message I think we've already written that have we have we written the method called display error message no we haven't so let's write that and then otherwise if you've got the data we've come this far we've got the data I'll just say display welcome message in fact um, that's the image that shouldn't even be here in fact that should be here So all I need to do now is write the welcome message and display error message functions. Oh, I need to write this as well and this also. Let's do one by one. Let's do each of these. These are UI concerns, uh, so they should be pretty easy.
and then I need to write a get access token function in the URL object. And this guy takes an app object and I'll just simply return app.params dot in fact not app.params it's going to get a request uh, in fact this dot params the URL from the URL params see if there is access token a property named access token uh, but before that compare the state compare the state access rf token with whatever was in the app object that you sent uh, and whatever came back in the url query string parameter so i would say uh, if the app object if we did send something in the app object app dot params dot state was not undefined then compare please compare um, if app dot params dot state was not equal to um, the request this dot params dot state if you didn't get that then don't return true just return undefined I mean don't return the access token return undefined and so uh, over here I will check when I get the access token I'll check if the access token equal to equal to undefined then I want to throw an error and oh sorry uh, the request may have been tampered with because the access RF token does not match. Now, obviously, you want to send some other message to the user, but this is a this is a demo, so forgive me for this for this rather technical message. And then I need to write a get user function that takes the access token and the app and returns a user object. Let's do that. So let's write a get user function. That takes an access token and the app object and gets you a user. So I need the resource server URL, which I'll get from the app dot provider dot. Uh, I think it was resource server URL, and then I need to add to that the access token equals access token. Um, and then to add to that an ampersand and the fields equals I'll get that from the app object dot fields and that will give me the resource server URL now I need to make a request to this URL so I'll say um, I'll just use the Ajax method and I'll say uh, that's the options URL will be the resource server URL. The <coughs> type of the request will be get. It could be anything. Uh, in fact, let's genericize this or, or let's leave it at this. Okay, let's genericize this. Let's go to the app object and add another uh, thing here called HTTP method for this request. And the app can define what kind of a method. In this case, it wants a get request sent. So I can say app dot HTTP method. And then I want this to be asynchronous. Oh, sorry, I don't want this to be asynchronous uh, because you have it shouldn't be that you haven't got the access token yet, or you've got the access token and you haven't got the user data yet. And, and you've just come back because it was an async request and so you get an error message while the access token is still being fetched and then the success function sorry uh, success function would be a function that gets the data obviously this is not something we'll call this that's something jQuery is going to call from inside it uh, so I need to set now if I say this dot user equals data um, then this doesn't 
mean the page object in this case because this function is going to get called from somewhere inside of jQuery. So I but I need to set this page objects user. So let me cache that and say that equals this over here. Over here, this simply means page, and I can say that dot user is data. And that should pretty much take care of everything, I think. So let's run this bit of code. I'm going to deauthorize this app because I just authorized it a moment ago. Uh, so I log in into Facebook and it works just fine. Um, and that's the debugger for the old code. So, so that's how you do implicit flow. I'm not really a JavaScript programmer, so I hate JavaScript. I can write JavaScript and I've written lots of it, but I just hate it like anything. Uh, that's the reason it took so long. So thank you for your patience. I hope you learned something today.